last time we did hypnosis, I was talking to you about how that you're always in control. So what I mean by that, I wanna build on it a little bit more. When it comes to being in control, you're never gonna do anything that you don't already agree with, okay? So when it comes to things like beliefs, do you know what a belief is? What's a belief? A belief is when I like, um, like it's like, um, like church people, they believe in like different things to other people. Okay, yeah, sure, that's one aspect. Then let's go a little bit more simple, okay? What do you think the big difference between belief and faith is? It's interesting where your little brain has to go to to be able to try and pull information from when you're like, it's a word, you know the word, you understand the word, you use the word, but to be able to understand the definition of them and explain it to someone else is difficult, isn't it? This is why language, remember what we were talking about last time? How I said, you make worlds with your words. Mm. Words create worlds because words are magical because we use spelling, spells, magic, mm. yeah? So, have a look at this. A belief, what's that word? Certain. Certain. A belief is only something that you have certainty in. It's like, I have certainty that you're my daughter. Like, it's, I believe you're my daughter. I have the evidence. So, building a belief system is something that you're certain in, which, to find certainty, you need this. You have evidence. So what do you think the difference is in having evidence and certainty to create a belief that turns it into a faith? For you to have faith, you have to have unconditional belief. It means that this, you have unconditional evidence. Do you know what conditions mean? Yeah, so it's a variable, that's what that means. So when the conditions change, it means that the variables change. So in your instance, when it's raining like it is out there now, and the conditions are changed, what are some of the conditions that are different about driving in the wet things? What are some of the physical things that you can touch that would be different, that would be a condition change? The um, road's more like slippery because of the water. Yeah. So that's what, that gives all of the reasons why you need to slow down. Does that make sense? So because the condition of the road has changed because the, when the water hits it, it might lift the oil up. So if there's oil on the road and it's on dry road, it's slippery, but it's not that bad. If the water hits the road because oil rises to the top of water, so if there's water on the road and there's oil on the road, the oil automatically goes through to the top. So what happens if you try and break quickly when you've got oil plus water? Um, you go spinning. You slide. So that's why they say, hey, just slow down. Slow down in the wet because the road becomes slippery because cars, trucks, bikes, you know, buses, all the rest of the things, they produce oil. And that's one of the conditions that you have to worry about. So, long-winded way of saying, what does unconditional mean? Do you know what the word unconditional means? Not really. Because lots of people use it. They say things like, I love you unconditionally, but then you go do something wrong and they take their love away from you. So that doesn't mean it's unconditional, does it? That means that it's conditional love. Mm. That's the difference. So conditions means that there's criteria, there's values, there's things that matter, that if you go outside of those, I'm gonna take that thing away from you, it's now conditional. Whereas unconditional, it's like how I love you. I unconditionally love you. There is nothing that you can do, that you can say, that you can, there's nothing that changes my love for you. Nothing? Nothing, ever. <laughs> I'm not saying to do this, but you could kick me in the balls and I would still love you unconditionally. I'd be upset that you hurt me, but I wouldn't be taking my love away from you. You're my daughter, I love you. Unconditionally. Full stop. <laughs> like, there's nothing, there's no negotiation with that. <laughs> the same with Sophia, the same with mum. Like, I love you guys unconditionally till I leave this world. And then even then, in spirit form, we don't know because we don't have evidence or certainty, because we haven't seen what's on the other side of when people leave the earth when they die. But I know I love you forever. When it comes to faith being an unconditional belief, it means that you've stacked on this word here, unconditional, that you have certainty, evidence, and you've got rid of the conditions. It means no matter what, I have a belief in this. That's what you can think of unconditional as, no matter what. So, 
no matter what, I have faith that the sun's going to rise in the east and set in the west. No matter what, north will always be that way, south will always be that way, and I have faith in those two directions, the same as east and west. <laughs> the same way that I have faith in God, not the Christian God or the Islamic God or, you know, like the in any of the other thousands of gods that humanity has created, I unconditionally know, trust, and have evidence and certainty of God. But that's my faith. I have, there's no conditions. No one could convince me otherwise because I have direct experience with my own. And that's one of the biggest sideways, sideways story here. That's one of the biggest things that people get caught on is they follow other people's stories to find God. Finding God is a unique individual pursuit because there's always something that is higher than human consciousness. There is always a creator because of this. You would have learned about this in science. Oh, cause and effect. Cause and effect. Every one of these was created by this. Everything started with this. You know in the Bible how they say, on the, or what is it, on the first day God created light and he said that was good? Yeah. Yeah? That was the initial cause. God created the cause. You know, in science how they say that everything started with the Big Bang, the big flash of light that created absolutely everything in the universe? Yeah. It's the exact same thing. It's just a different perspective. It's a different story. Science is a religion. That's it. I'm just going to put that out there as a little caveat. <laughs> everything started with a cause. So then, here's a little noodle scratcher for you. This will probably hurt your brain as much as it hurts my brain every time I think of it. So if God was the original cause that it created the effect of everything that is being able to be perceived, so seen, smelt, touched, tasted, felt, like all of these things, what caused God? Because everything started with a cause in our physical universe. Our physical universe that started with the Big Bang started with God creating light and everything else came from that what caused God? yeah right that's a noodle scratcher I've been thinking about that for about 15 years and I'll continue to think about it for the rest of my life it's a very important thing to, to, to consider it's like if God is the oldest thing and the observable universe is like 13 billion years old what's older than God? what's older than the universe? so you can like you can take it back to that in a like little segue, in the Taoist philosophy, which is ancient Chinese philosophy called the Tao Te Ching, uh, you know the picture of the yin yang. Yeah. Yeah. The yin yang is the symbol for this philosophy here. So I'll draw it loosely. It's a terrible drawing, but you get the picture. So this is the yin yang, right? The yin, the yang. There is a little bit of yin, the white. In the yang, there's a little bit of yang in the yin. Everything's balanced, everything's perfect, everything is divine in line and right on time. Everything is perfectly polarized. The lower down that you think, the more human, the more animalistic that you think, the more polarized things get, the bigger that the discrepancies between the two halves are, the more polarity, the more division, the more pain, the more separation you can experience. God, in the Taoist philosophy, is this. It's the line that separates everything. That is the Tao, and the Tao is the way. And the way is the balanced path. It's the straight and narrow path. And every single human being's path is unique to them. That's why I spend so much time with you, focusing on your mind, focusing on your zone of genius, so that you don't live by anyone else's rules. So you don't live by anyone else's beliefs, so you don't live by anyone else's values. So that you have what's called meta values, meta beliefs, because you're the one who deliberately create them. You're not getting injected from other people, including me. You're creating your own worldview. That's why this is so important, because you're doing this here. You're walking the line in between chaos and order, up and down, left and right, hot and cold. And it's up to you to determine what your path is. So everyone, Call that a star. It's not really a star, but it's a star. <laughs> Everyone has this. What's that? 
North Star. Everyone has a guiding North Star. But what happens with polarity is we're divided. And until you find God, your North Star, your compass, the thing that's self-orienting you towards your purpose, towards your mission, towards everything that is your reason for being here, right here, right now, you will do this. <laughs> You'll miss the path. So many people do this. So many people are caught down here. They're going, oh, this is good, that's bad, this is good, that's bad, this is good, that's bad, now this is bad, that's good, and they're just staying down here. Notice what this symbol creates. Infinity. Infinity. This is what majority of people are doing. They're down here infinitely between the two poles, not, ne not recognizing their own innate desire, purpose, meaning. Like, they don't know because they're not paying attention to the thing that's inside of them, guiding them. The thing that is above and beyond them, inspiring them. To inspire is to, is to breathe, is to come from within. That's what purpose, meaning, mission is. Everything comes from within. Everything is divinely inspired from you because you are divine in nature. You are God. Yeah. You are. Everyone is. Everything is. Everything that you can see, hear, smell, touch, taste in the three-dimensional world is God. Everything. Up here, your North Star is unique to you. That's why your beliefs are so important. That's why your values are so important. That's why I, t I tell you to follow your own heart to follow your own inspiration, the thing that comes from within you. That's why you love sports so much. <laughs> that's, that's you, that's your zone of genius. And that's gonna continue evolving and transforming as you get older. You will find something that is so niche, so specific, that is your absolute unequivocal zone of genius, your unconditional zone of genius, that you have pure faith and you're like, yeah, I know exactly what I'm here to do. I know how I, I'm here to serve. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know how I'm gonna make money. I know how I'm gonna find love. I know how I'm gonna protect myself, how I'm gonna support others. Like you just know that you get to a place where I am right now at turning 35 this year, where I have unconditional faith and belief in what my purpose is here to do on this earth. I know, and it becomes easy. Like I love my life. I like, I'm so inspired to do all the things that I do, to teach all the people that I teach, to be able to help heal and like all the things that I do because I know why I'm here. And me being your father and having all the beliefs and all the understandings and everything that I do, my purpose is partially to help leave this world a better place so that you you guys can come in and to be able to help continue serving to make this place even more beautiful. Because you know how in the Christian Bible they talk about the thing called the Garden of Eden? Mm, not really. This is it. This is it. This is the Garden of Eden. This is where everything's beautiful, everything's perfect. But humanity's perceptions, because of this, where they change the perception of God and divinity into good and bad and polarization, yin and yang, now they're separated. And now everyone fights one another. And now everyone can see the pain, the, they can demonize other people, they can hurt other people because they, re they stop remembering this, that they're all God. When it comes to understanding all of this stuff, this is all the stuff that I do and I teach all of my clients, I'm going to make sure that you understand this at a really embodied level so that you have unconditional faith in everything that I've taught you so that you know exactly what you're here to do on your straight and narrow path to stop you from infinitely avoiding pain, seeking pleasure and bypassing and going, huh, this is exactly what I'm supposed to do. Your journey is not going to be straight and narrow. It's not going to be up and down. It might be something like this. You'll still have twists and turns. There's still going to be distractions. There's still, still things you're going to be like, oh, this is interesting over here. What am I doing? No, I don't like that. No, I'm going to do this. Everyone does that. I still do that. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Something will catch me of interest. And I'll be like, hmm, what can I learn from that? I'm going to learn all I can. I'll read through it, learn from it, invest in it, pay money, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll go, nah, that shit, I don't like it anymore. And I'll <laughs> go, and then I'll get back on my straight and narrow path. I'm here to help you walk this middle path where everything is balanced towards your North Star where you are the cause of all the deliberate effects in your life. If you start doing this, where you recognize you are the creator of everything in your life, everything that you want to experience, that you want to affect, starts with the cause that starts with you. And the causes that, that created the effects that created you is me. I am the cause, I am the creator, you are my effect. So I 
have to make sure that I keep creating more causes to be able to change the effect. The same way that you are doing it in your life. Does that make sense? It's so exciting. <laughs> so I had the same thing with me. My parents were the cause of me. I'm the effect of my parents, right? They are the effect of their parents. So on and so forth until human species began. We're all related. Whether we like it or not, every single human being came from the exact same fucking place in Africa probably about 200, 300,000 years ago. We're all the exact same. But evolution in our bodies have changed over the thousands and thousands and thousands of years to adapt to the climate and to the place that we live, the food that we eat, the temperature, like everything like that. Remember this saying, everything is divine in line and right on time. Everything's perfect. You, it's, it's our human perception that does this. It polarizes things. Good, bad, up, down, hot, cold, left, right. Everything in the physical world has an equal and opposite reaction. Where there is up, there is down. So tell me, on this scale here, at what point does hot become cold and cold become hot? Hot starts turning into cold the moment that it leaves over here. The moment it's no longer, let's call this absolute 100, and this is absolute 100. So that means that this is zero. The moment it's not 100 and it starts moving this way, it starts becoming cold. The moment that this starts moving this way and it's no longer 100, it starts becoming hot. All they are is different sides of the same divinity. At what moment does left become right? When things start spot. The moment that it starts leaving 100% left and starts moving right, it starts becoming right. The more that it moves away from the left and it moves towards the right, the more right it becomes. Everything is like this. So getting back to faith, out of all of this, what can you have faith in the most? That you're always going to help me stay on the middle path. Damn straight. Damn straight, kiddo. The other thing that you can have unequivocal faith in, everything starts with a cause. I'm also thinking about that. Yeah. The two unconditional things here that you have belief in is every cause creates an effect and every effect was created by a cause. And everything that was created by cause was caused by what? I'll give you another little secret. Anything that you're experiencing that gives you a greater inflated ego, a greater sense of self, it's not God. What is it? It's for you to explore. It's not for me to tell you what it is. It's for you to find out. Anything that inflates your sense of self, inflates your ego, inflates your importance, inflates how good you are, it's not God. 